Edge there. Okay, welcome to our third virtual workshop. I'm glad all of you can join us. And I've heard um, all of you are excited to make homemade chocolate chip cookies with me today. Um, it looks like we got some smiles, so a lot of people are excited here. So um, let's go ahead and do, before we jump in and do some review of what we need to do before we actually start baking any product. First off, a couple things in working in the kitchen of um, what we what we need to do yeah. is nope. Okay. So a couple things we need to do before we actually start. One is um, we need to think about what type of clothes we are wearing. Now, I put on a short sleeve t-shirt, as you can see, and I do have my 4-H shirt on today. If you have long sleeves on, take time. We want to roll up our sleeves or fold them up so they don't get in the way as we are cooking. Yes, very good, Briley, rolling up those sleeves or just taking off your sweatshirt if you have a t-shirt on. Second, if we have long hair, we want to make sure that we have most of our hair pulled back behind our head and secured because we don't want our hair in our way and we definitely don't want our hair to fall in the cookie dough or anything that we're baking. So if you have longer hair, pull it back a little bit, either in a ponytail or a clip really quick. Always important when we're cooking. And the last thing that we want to do is um, before we cook or bake any product is we wanna make sure we wash our hands. So I went ahead and washed my hands really good right before I started. If you haven't done so, quickly go wash your hands with soap and water because we want to have clean hands as we're cooking so we have clean food. So what we're going to do today is make homemade chocolate chip cookies. And I picked a very easy, simple recipe with all the traditional ingredients with chocolate chip cookies. There's many varieties of how we can make these different fun ingredients we can add, but we're just gonna make a basic chocolate chip cookie today. So the ingredients that we need are, we need butter, we need brown sugar, regular sugar, white sugar, we need two eggs, you can see them here, we need vanilla, flour, baking soda, we need some salt, and of course, the absolute best part, we need our chocolate chips. Do I have everything? Yep. Now what are you supposed to stick the oven to? So hopefully you guys can join me as we bake. Um, I know we have several of us joining today, so if you can't um, keep up, that's okay. Just try to follow along the best you can, and you can finish um, at the end. But does everyone have the recipe in front of them that I emailed to them? Yes? All right. Very good. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. We want to do that first so our oven has enough time to get to the right temperature so it's ready to go when, when we're ready to put the cookie dough into the oven. So go ahead and set your oven for 375 degrees. I'm just sitting down. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we are going to add what we call like our liquid ingredients, or our soft ingredients, all together First, we're going to put them in one separate bowl and, and mix them thoroughly. And the first um, three ingredients that we are going to put is the butter and the brown and the white sugar together, and we're going to cream them together really well. Now, for the butter, we need one cup butter. So if you see butter like this, it's actually already measured out in front of you, and it gives you the measurements. Every recipe will tell you how much butter you need, and um, there's measurements on here by tablespoons of how much to add so you can get the right amount. Now this recipe calls for um, one cup. 
So as you can see, this one stick of butter that we have is eight tablespoons, and that is a half a cup. So I needed two full sticks of butter for a recipe. And you can see that here. I have it all ready to go. Now a couple things with butter that I'd like to, um, for you to, to know is one, it's very important to follow the recipe thoroughly based on the type of fat that it says we need for our cookies. And when I mean fat, I mean whether it's butter, margarine, or short meat. A lot of recipes will um, specify exactly what type they want you to put into the recipe. So it's important you follow that very carefully. In this case, it does say butter, and that's what we're using is, is actual butter. Another thing with butter is a lot of people will store this, store their butter in the freezer. When you're going to make cookies or whatever it is with butter, it's important to have your butter at room temperature when you're ready to make this. So I took this butter out from the freezer yesterday, put it in the refrigerator, and then I took it out and got it to room temperature probably about an hour ago and let it sit on the counter so it's nice and soft, but it's not melted. I know a lot of times if you're in a hurry when you are baking, um, and it's not quite um, still frozen, not really thawed, a lot of times people will just put it in the microwave, melt it down real good, um, just to try to get by. We really don't want to do that if we want to make really good quality cookies. We want our butter soft and at room temperature only and not melted. So I'm going to go ahead and put my butter into my main baking dish, which you can go ahead and do that too. One cup or two sticks of butter. And then in that bowl, we're also going to add three fours, or excuse me, one cup light brown sugar. So I have my brown sugar here, and I have my cup. This particular cup here is called a dry measuring cup. We want to use this for all of our dry ingredients, meaning anything that is not liquid or wet. So if you have your one cup dry measuring cup, we're going to pack the brown sugar. And there's a certain way that we do this that makes it unique from other dry ingredients. So I'm going to scoop some brown sugar into my one cup. See if you can see that here. Okay, so the, so the recipe called for one cup packed brown sugar. So what that means is I have my cup of brown sugar here, and I have it almost full, but what I wanna do now is I wanna pack it down. So we get, take all the air out and just really pack it down. And as I pack it down, I realize that I don't have a full cup of brown sugar. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit more All right, I added a little bit more brown sugar. Now I'm going to pack it down again, get all that air out, make sure I have one full cup of brown sugar. And I see Caitlin joined us. Hi, Caitlin. All right, when you got your brown sugar, one full cup packed down really well, we can go ahead and add it to the butter, all right, in that bowl. Okay, so next after that, we're gonna add the um, 3 fourths cup granulated sugar. So in my dry measuring cups, I actually have a 3 fourths cup dry measuring cup, which is kind of unusual. I was kind of excited to get this. So we're gonna do some quick math. If you do not have a 3 fourths cup dry measuring cup, 
what other two cups could you use to add up to three-fourths cup? You can put it in the chat if you know. <coughs> We're going to have three-fourths cup, one three-fourths cup. What do we need to do? The other options we have is a fourth of a cup, a third of a cup, one cup, and a half a cup. If we combine two of those, do you know what we will get to get three-fourths cup? I see Briley typing. I think she knows that answer. Oh, exactly right. One fourth and one half cup. So we have a very small one fourth cup and we have our one half cup. So if we put sugar in both of these, put it in our bowl, we're going to have a total of three fourths cup. Who knew there was so much math and fractions in cooking, right? So go ahead and measure out three-fourths cup of sugar and add it to your bowl. All right, we get the sugar measured. <clears throat> all right, looks like it. So now what we're gonna do is we're, we're going to do what's called cream all of this together. We're gonna cream the butter and the sugar together to create a really good, nice consistency. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use an electric mixer like I'm going to use, or if you have a good whisk, you can whisk it around. We want to really blend it so all of the butter and the sugar, they cream together and make a really good texture and that's gonna affect and raise the quality of the chocolate chip cookies. So it looks like uh, Ceres has her mixer ready, so does Allie. Looks like Lily's got a nice spoon, so I'm gonna get my electric mixer here and hopefully I'll adjust my camera so you can see how we're gonna do this. Everyone can see, I know it's going to make some noise here, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and start creaming, and you guys can do the same. back up here. I stopped my mixer. It's a little full yet with butter. Just gonna try and get some of this butter out and then we will continue mixing. How's everyone else doing on mixing your butter and your sugars together?
All right, I need to get my whisk out. My, my mixer isn't working the best right now. How's everyone doing? Is it coming out in a nice texture and creamy? Bring it back up here so you can see me. Looks like Allie's going pretty good with her mixer. Riley, how are you doing? Mommy, how do I you get show her that? Yeah. Should have a nice cream consistency. Okay, so once you have that all creamed and ready to go, go ahead and set that aside. Um, just for a minute, and then we're going to get our eggs ready. Don't wash your hands again. hands. All right. So the next thing we're going to add is eggs. We need two eggs for this recipe. And again, like we said with the butter, it's important that all of our ingredients are ready to go at room temperature. So I have two eggs here, and to crack them, crack them open, I suggest you do it in a separate bowl rather than the, than the, the bowl with the butter and the um, brown sugar in them, just in case, if you're like me, sometimes you get a little eggshell in there. We don't want that to get into our cookie dough. So if you're ready, go ahead and crack two eggs open in a small bowl and get them ready to add. Did we get the eggs going? I got eggs on. All right. I don't think so. I need to do it. So after the eggs, we want to add the vanilla, and we need two teaspoons of vanilla. So hopefully you all have um, little teaspoons or tablespoons. There is a difference. If you're not sure about it, about which is which, a teaspoon will have the um, label of TSP, where a tablespoon will have TBSP. So we want one that says one TSP. And we're gonna go ahead and add the vanilla two teaspoons of vanilla to our egg mixture in our small bowl. All right, did we get the vanilla and eggs ready? All right, so go ahead and add that to your cream mixture of your brown sugar and butter. Go ahead and add that, and then get your whisk or electric mixer and go ahead and mix some more. Keep mixing it.
So the consistency that you want is you mix all of these liquid ingredients is one very smooth, kind of brown, be brownish in color, but we don't want any lumps. So keep mixing until you feel that it's a very smooth texture with no lumps. If there's lumps, it's probably the butter. Maybe sugar sometimes gets a little clumpy, the brown sugar, you have to break that up. But make sure you get it really good and really good consistency. How's everyone doing? Is it looking good? Yep, I, oh, Meredith gave me a big thumbs up, so hers must be turning out pretty good. All right, are we ready to move on? So what we're gonna do is, you can see mine, I have a clear bowl if you can see the consistency of mine. We're gonna go ahead and set our liquid ingredients to the side and we're gonna now start adding our dry ingredients. And we wanna do that in a separate bowl and mix all of our dry ingredients together and then we will combine them together. So I have another bowl here for our dry ingredients. And the next dry ingredients is two and a half cups all-purpose flour. Now there is a correct way to measure flour so we get exactly two and a half cups of flour. So I have my one cup, dry measuring cup, and I'm gonna scoop some flour into the cup. Um. And as you can see, I have the flour heaping over the cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flat edge of my butter knife here with my flour. Let me move some stuff around so I don't make a mess. And I'm gonna take the flat edge and I'm gonna go right across the top of that cup so I, so I level it off. Everyone can see how I'm doing that. See, it's all leveled off right there. So that's one cup, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my glass bowl. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that again because I need two and a half cups. So I only did one cup so far, so we're gonna keep going. So again, I have one cup of flour, but it's kind of heaping over, so I'm gonna take that flat edge of my butter knife and and level it off. So that's two cups, but I need two and a half. So now I'm gonna grab my half cup dry measuring cup and do it one more time so I have two and a half cups of flour. All right, I leveled it off with my knife. Hopefully you guys are doing the same. All right, so in my bowl here, two and a half cups of flour. So the next dry ingredient that we're gonna add is the baking soda. And I, I, um, I went ahead and pre-measured this, but we need one teaspoon. So that would be what we talked about, the one that has, that's labeled TSP, that's one teaspoon. Baking soda. 
And this is the part that's gonna help make the cookie rise, help give it a little bit so it's not just a flat cookie. This is that gives it some substance. Whether you add this to a coffee cake or bread or brownies, this is what kind of helps that dough rise a little bit and give it some height. So go ahead and add one teaspoon baking soda to your dry ingredients. And then the next thing is one one teaspoon of salt. Again, I pre-measured this out, just your table salt. So measure that, put that in, um, in your bowl with your flour and your baking soda, and go ahead and just give that a little stir. We're gonna mix all those dry ingredients together. Don't really need to stir it too much, just enough so it's all blended really well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, is everyone ready to kind of move on? Everyone still with us? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our dry ingredients, which is the flour, baking soda, and salt, and we are going to combine it with our liquid ingredients of our butter and our sugars that we just creamed together. So one thing that we want to do, if we want to make a really good quality cookie, oh, Riley has her hand up. Do you have a question? No, maybe not. Okay. So if we want to make really good chocolate chip cookies, when we add our dry ingredients, our flour mixture to our wet ingredients, what we want to do is we want to slowly add them together. We want to add a little bit of flour mixture into our cream, uh, butter and sugar, and stir it, and then add a little bit of more flour and stir it. We don't want to add all of it all at one time, okay? So if you're able, if you need a dot to help you, if you can just take your bowl here, see if I can, I'll move my, my camera again. So if you can see, um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour, here, looks like I got some on my shirt, just a little bit, and take my whisk and just start slowly stirring the ingredients together. Okay, when you have that mixed, add a little bit more flour into your mix. We sometimes have to put our muscles into it, our arm and bicep muscles into it, really stirring and getting everything mixed together, the right consistency. All right, so I just have a little bit of flour left. I'm gonna go ahead and add the remainder of that to my cookie dough and do some final stirs here before we add the best part of our cookie ingredients. So you want to stir the remainder of the flour in until you cannot see the flour anymore. So keep stirring until there's no more flour. All right, so now for the best part, the chocolate chips, right? The main ingredient of these 
cookies and chocolate chips. And we need two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I have them pre-measured, see if you can see them. They're all ready to go, two cups. Again, you're gonna wanna use your dry measuring cup to measure these. So I'm gonna add some chocolate chips in here. And then I'm gonna fold it in a unique way, a certain unique way called folding. I'm not actually gonna stir in a circle. I'm actually gonna do what's called folding the chocolate chips into the batter. So I'll see, I'll move my camera again if you guys wanna watch. Rather than stirring like this, I'm actually gonna come up from underneath and just start folding the batter, mixing those chocolate chips. We just need to stir enough so all the chocolate chips are evenly distributed amongst all of the cookie dough batter. All right. How is it looking, guys? Is it looking pretty good? Looking yummy? Do you want to try a little bit? Oh, sorry, you can't. When we talk about raw cookie dough that isn't been baked yet, we actually cannot have a taste of it. Does anyone know why? Eggs. Raw eggs. Because of the raw eggs. We put two eggs into our batter, and since the eggs haven't cooked yet, they're still raw, we actually can't taste the cookie dough. I know it's very tempting. A lot of people like to do that. But anytime in baking, um, if there's raw eggs, we cannot taste the cookie dough. Um, raw eggs, if you eat them and consume them, they could make you sick. So unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit longer before we can try these. So I think we're ready to start scooping these up into our cookie sheets. So I have my cookie sheet here ready to go. And then I have a little ice cream scoop here that I'm gonna use. So all of my cookies are gonna be the same size. We talk, when we talk about cookies at the county fair to exhibit, we want the cookies to be all the same size. So if I use one, ice cream scoop, then I know that they're gonna come out all at the same size, okay? If you're ready to go ahead, start mixing and putting your cookie dough on your cookie sheet. Try and give them about three inches apart from each other because they are gonna flatten and rise, so they are gonna need a little space to bake. You might need a second cookie sheet. Because we have a big batch of batter here. So I have my second sheet. I'm going to go ahead and keep adding my chocolate chips, cookie dough here. Again, spacing them and trying to make them roughly the same size. Well, I'm sorry, Weeki. I don't have any tries that loses. <laughs>
How's it coming? Are they coming out on the cookie sheet pretty good? All right, so if you can see, I'll move my camera. You can see I have my um, cookie dough here on this cookie sheet, evenly spaced, using that um, ice cream, small ice cream scoop. They're all the same size right now. So if you're ready, with the help of an adult, go ahead and put um, your cookies in the cookie sheet, actually before, in the oven, but before we do that, let's talk about how long we want to um, bake our cookies. The recipe, it says to bake for 10 minutes, and that's usually average for any type of cookie. Usually, um, it's anywhere between 10 minutes and 13 minutes. Now, if you want to make a really good quality cookie, you're actually going to want to undercook the cookie in the oven. You're wanna, gonna want to not put it in for as long as the recipe calls. Usually, you're going to back it off by at least one minute. And the reason for that is because when you take the cookies out of the oven, they're going to continue to bake for about another minute to a minute and 30 seconds. And so this way you won't ever fear or have the chance of overcooking, um, overcooking the um, cookie or over baking it. So Lily asked, how many cookies does this bake? I believe this will make about 24 cookies. Again, it depends on the size of each cookie that you're making. If you're keeping them consistent with a small ice cream scoop or spoon, um, you might be able to get a few more. So the recipe calls to bake for 10 minutes. So I'm going to bake them for nine minutes and then let them bake out of the oven for one minute so I know that they will not um, overbake. So again, with the help of an adult, go ahead and put your cookies in the oven. All right, everyone get them in the oven. Looks like Allie's still finishing. Cerise and Oliver still going. That's all right, take your time. So while we have to wait this long 10 minutes before the cookies are ready to, to make and ready to eat, let's talk a little bit about how we can make our chocolate chip cookies into a fair exhibit. So Nebraska 4-H um, offers four levels of cooking, level 101, uh, 201, 301, and 401. So, um, base, learning how to make basic cookies comes from the level one. Here's a picture of the manual that I have. You can pick up at any of your extension offices. And it gives some really great terms and goes into detail about some of the things we talked about today, whether it's using a dry measuring cup or a liquid measuring cup, how to correct, correctly measure flour, how to correctly measure your, or pack your brown sugar, um, why we add different ingredients like salt or baking soda or baking powder. Um, it really goes into detail and helps you start learning some terminology with kitchen, learning some basic math that comes with cooking and baking. And then in the end, um, it has some really fun recipes that you can use and bake. There's biscuits, there's some main course meals, there's some snacks, um, and of course some more cookie recipes in there. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pick up um, your copy. This is all, also available that you can buy if you want this because this is a really good reference um, for um, learning how to cook and bake. So taking cookies to the county fair, what is asked is that you um, bring four cookies. Out of your whole batch, you pick your four best cookies um, and put them on a small plate um, in a, and then put it in a Ziploc bag and include the recipe um, in, its, in its entirety. Entirety. Now you have the recipe from today that we're using. 
Um, if you use a different recipe, you'll need to make a copy of that or write it down um, and include that with your cookies for your fair exhibit. Now, how do you pick the four best cookies? What you're gonna wanna do is pick four that look exactly alike. They're like twins. Which four cookies look exactly alike? Are they the same shape? Are they the same color? Um, everything like that. Now a good size cookie, if you're trying to pick a good size cookie, especially if we're talking about serving size, is gonna be two inches by two inches. So not necessarily that you need to get a ruler out and measure it, but just something to think about when you pick up the cookie. It doesn't necessarily need to be a big cookie by any means. A good size is two inches by two inches. So when the cookies are judged at the county fair, there's several different areas that the judge is gonna look at um, to determine the quality of your chocolate chip cookie. The first one is really just the visual look of the cookie. If they can tell that all the ingredients are blended together well, does it have a good smell to it? They might smell your cookie. Um, and they're gonna look to see if all four cookies are the exact same size and shape. Do they look pretty much identical? They're gonna feel the cookie and see if it's um, kind of crumbly or is it really too hard and overcooked. Um, and then they're going to look at the bottom of the cookie and see if there's a lot of um, holes or what they call cells. If they're all even kind of the air pockets that are in the cookie that are kind of baking and shaping right now. The judge is going to taste test the cookie to see if all the ingredients are blended well to make sure that there's not one flavor of your cookie that overpowers another one. For example, if you were to accidentally add too much salt she might be able to identify that there's too much salt in the cookie. Um, <coughs> excuse me, maybe if you added cinnamon, there's too much cinnamon and it doesn't blend well, it overpowers the other ingredients. That's something that um, the judge is gonna look for. The judge is also gonna be able to tell with the recipe that you provide if you used the correct fat. When Remember when I said fat, that's the butter, the shortening, or the margarine. If the recipe, said butter and you substituted margarine, the judge is gonna be able to know that from tasting the cookie because it's gonna change the consistency of taste um, if, if you don't use the correct, the correct fat there. She's also gonna make sure that there's not, um, oh, it's not overly greasy. If you just um, greased your cookie sheet or added too much of that, they're gonna be able to tell, is it a uniform shape, uniform size, um, there's no visual flour that maybe didn't get mixed as well, and she can see some flour. The judges will be able to see that. All right, so we have just a couple minutes left. The cookies are about half done ah. baking. Are they starting to smell good? Yeah. Cerise, do you have a question? Your hand is up. Can you put it in the chat? Unfortunately, my speakers are not working, so I can't hear you. But if you want to put it in the chat, I can answer your question. Or if anyone else has a question, while we have a couple minutes for the cookies come out of the oven, feel free to put them in the chat as well, and we can talk about that as a group. <laughs> Meredith, my favorite cookie is the monster cookie. All right, oatmeal with maybe some M&Ms, maybe some chocolate chips, absolutely my favorite. How about everybody else? Put that in the chat. What is your favorite type of cookie? I might also put peanut butter. I like peanut butter cookies. I made those last weekends as well. Big thumbs up. All right, Meredith, Meredith we need to make some monster cookies next time, right?
No, I'm not on my favorite. Oh, yeah, it's not for chip. Looks like Bailey's already eating her afternoon snack. I hope that's not cookie dough. <laughs> Caitlin loves chocolate chip. Oh, then you're in a treat today, right? Allie likes chocolate chip. Cerise and Olive like all cookies. That's good. Is it really a bad cookie? Really? I don't think so. All right, so since we just have a couple minutes left, we're gonna take the cookies out of the oven soon. Now, one thing we need to get ready is our hot pads, all right? Because our cookie sheets are gonna be really hot. So if you have permission from an adult to take the cookies out, get the hot pads ready. I'm gonna do that too. Or if the adult's gonna do it for you, make sure that they are taking the right precautions so they don't get burnt. It might also be a good idea if you think about where you're gonna put your cookies once you take them out of the oven. Are you gonna put them on the stove top or the countertop? If you're gonna put them on a countertop, go ahead and put some hot pads um, on the countertop and put the cookie sheets on top of that so the heat doesn't burn your countertops or your kitchen table, wherever you might put it. Or you can put down um, a towel as well. Oh, Briley likes chocolate chip cookies. Very good. All right. So now one thing that we can also do for the next two minutes is we can start our wonderful cleanup process. If we are old enough to bake and cook with our moms or dads, we are old enough to help with the cleanup. That includes taking all the dishes to the sink and washing them yourselves or with the help of an adult, and then putting all the ingredients away that we didn't use. If you have any extra flour or your uh, maybe container of vanilla, your baking soda, make sure we put them um, back in the cupboard. And then we're gonna wanna wash off our countertops because if it's like mine, there's flour and sugar all over. And if you can hear that beep, that is my oven. The cookies are done. So let's see what we got. Nathan, come Okay, the cookies are looking great. Just took them out of the oven and they smell wonderful and look wonderful. They plumped really good. They actually made big cookies. Kind of surprised me, but they're about that two inches by two inches, maybe just a little bit more actually. But back to cleaning up the mess. That is your responsibility as the 4-H'er and the cook to clean up your own mess. All right, can everyone give me a thumbs up if you agree with that? I don't see my thumbs up. Oh, there we go. Cerise gave me, or Olive gave me a thumbs up. Very good. And Caitlin. Yes, very important to do that. So you might have some leftover batter. If you only use two cookie sheets and have some leftover batter, once you take it out of the oven, we're going to want the cookies, like I said, continue to bake for another minute, a minute and a half. But I'm going to let them sit on the cookie sheet for about three minutes. And then I'm going to use a spatula, take them off and put them on a cooling rack or my cookie sheet rack. And then I can use that cookie sheet again for the rest of my batter and bake for another 10 minutes. The cookies, you want to see the cookies, Riley? Okay, let me get my spatula. All right, there is my chocolate chip cookie. Bring it in for a close up if you can see that. They're big. 
Yeah. All right, guys, that is the end of today. I'm so glad all of you joined us. Next week at this time, join Brandy as she talks about plants. She's going to go through and talk about vegetable gardening, how to get your vegetable garden ready for the county fair. She's going to talk about what exhibits you can show, what vegetables, and exactly how you can get them prepared and how to get them um, ready for the county fair, um, along with um, what things you can be doing now to get your garden ready. I know it's hard to think about gardening when we just had snow yesterday, although it looks like it's all gone. But she is going to do that, so join um, next Friday at 2.30 for Brandy for that. And then I keep watching. In May, we are, are going to do um, these workshops again. We're going to continue them, I believe, on Fridays. But we would like to know your thoughts. What would be some fun activities that you want to continue learning about, whether it's more cooking, whether it's more on plants, first aid and safety, um, shopping style, something new, uh, maybe about wildlife conservation, maybe about taxidermy, maybe about getting your livestock ready for the fair, or something about chickens, chicken showmanship. Let us know. You can put it in the chat now, or let us know later um, this week as we start planning for some fun May workshops. All right, any other questions or fun comments? Um, can you show us livestock? Yes, I can. And I already talked to somebody yesterday, um, possibly about doing um, how to properly fit your cattle, doing a video with or Zoom with that, and properly how to wash your cattle and get them ready for fair. Caitlin says more cooking. Any ideas, Caitlin? Maybe coffee cake, muffins? What would you like to learn how to cook? Okay. Well, if you have ideas, let us know. Otherwise, enjoy your chocolate chip cookies this afternoon. Enjoy cleaning up your fun mess. Um, oh, so recent all of say chickens. Okay, we can do some on chickens. How does that sound? You are welcome. You are welcome. Yes. I'm so glad you all joined us today. I'm going to stay in a couple minutes if you have questions. But otherwise, have a great day and a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday, okay? All right, bye-bye. All right. Bye, Briley. Bye.